Hi guys, welcome back. Or if this is your first time here, then thank you for joining us. This is the Doula's Guide to Dot 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 with me, Meg, also known as the Dungaree Doula. It's a podcast where we talk about all things pregnancy, birth and parenting. My aim is to share unbiased information alongside a bit of friendly chit chat to ensure that you head into parenthood feeling confident and excited for what you've got to come. If you missed the first couple of episodes and would like to know more about me, then go and check out episode one for a little introduction and a big chat on hypnobirthing and the following episodes for some great birth and postpartum preparation. If you love the podcast, then you can now leave me a little tip to say thank you via buy me a coffee. The link is in the show notes. I am so excited to bring you today's episode with Eve, who is the founder of Baba and Boo. We're talking all about the joy of reusable nappies and touching on reusable wipes, breast pads and cloth sanitary products too. Baba and Boo are one of my favourite nappy brands out there and I loved hearing Eve talk about how she set the company up. I have used their nappies for years and years and I've also used their breast pads and their cloth sanitary pads too. I even used their cloth sanitary pads for all of my postpartum bleeding the second time around. Sorry, that is far too much information for the intro, (laughs) but they are just amazing. I will rave about them forever because I truly feel that they contributed to my healing process and how fast and comfortable that was after having Juniper, my second child, compared to the first time around when I was using the horrible plasticky maternity pads. So enough chat from me, let's get into it. And I hope that you love this episode as much as I loved recording it. Perfect. So, thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, do you want to start off with telling us a bit about yourself and a little bit about Baba and Boo and how it sort of came to be? <laughs> yeah, so I'm Eve. I've um, been running Baba and Boo for 13 years now. Wow. My, my kids are teenagers because I started it when they were 18 months and nine weeks old. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I look back now and I think, my God, what was I thinking? I don't think I was thinking straight. <laughs> no. My kids didn't sleep either. No, neither so, did mine. <laughs> just, I was getting no sleep. I think I needed something for me mm. that was just outside of kind of just drowning in, in yeah. and motherhood and <laughs> CBBs and everything. Um, but I've always been passionate about waste, really. I've been brought up, my dad is, is just he's still like this now he, he comes to my house and he's watching over my bin like what are you putting in the bin <laughs> really it's just yeah so if he, he can't walk past a skip he honestly he'll go in a skip and he'll because yeah. he'll say he's throwing this away <laughs> so i think i've just been brought up i've been brought up in a, what's now a zero waste lifestyle yeah that was my life i didn't know any different really so when i had the children it, throwing nappies away and your bin was full you know, I had two in nappies. It was full within a day. It yeah. was just like, this isn't right. So then, and it wasn't only that I was made redundant when I was on maternity leave because I had the children really in quick succession and I was made redundant. So I just lost all my income. Yeah. And I thought, one of my friends said, why don't you try reusable nappies? It should save you some money. So she lent me some and then my love of cloth nappies start there as it always does really. Yeah. Most Love mum, she used to use them, and you're like, oh my god, these are amazing, and they become like a hobby, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, but then I was a buyer before I was made redundant, and I just kind of thought, I oh, can't see having a go at these and seeing having a go at making them myself and trying to make them more more appealing, really. I yeah. suppose. Uh, put different prints on them, and I've always been quite creative, so I love the print side of it. So I just started from there, really, just really small. I got a little bit of um, a tiny bit of redundancy pay, and I just used that to start it. And wow. I'm still here. <laughs> That's amazing. I can't believe you had a nine-week-old baby as well. <laughs> that's just like I think that's just mother I think that's actually that's motherhood with your second I think with your first you just like because you've only got one you chill out and it's like a really nice maternity leave and then when you've got your second you realize that you don't have that chill out time anymore because you've got like a crazy toddler running around so you're like I need to do something because I was the same I did my um hypnobirthing training I literally like started it I think maybe like a week after she was born or something and then I had to take her to the training weekend when she was about three months old and everyone else had like (laughs) toddlers and stuff and I was just there like breastfeeding (laughs) juniper like please teach me I want to I want to be a hypnobirthing teacher (laughs) because yeah I think I just was like I'm not getting rest anywhere yeah they're not sleeping no and I think it's good for you in a way I think I went I went to something one uh, like a a mumpreneur as they were called years ago um conference and 
someone came on and said it's not a good time to start a business I'm thinking well you're at the wrong conference yeah and, um, <laughs> I think it actually is because you've had such a change of lifestyle and yeah. mindset and it's like why not do it all at once rather than <laughs> yeah then drag it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah just go for it and I think especially when it's something that's to do with motherhood or to do with raising children like were you with nappies and with hypnobirthing for me it felt like I was all entangled in that part of yeah. my life anyway like why not <laughs> yeah you're all in it aren't you you yeah. just want to go even more all in yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh no that's amazing so it started with just the nappies and then sort of over the years developed into being the other stuff so like the um cloth sanitary pads and the breast pads and stuff or was that quite soon after the nappies um no I just concentrated on nappies for a long time and then it was it was um I think someone I've got an amazing community and I always call us like it's our business really yeah. they'll always come to me with ideas for prints and products and things and I think someone said have you thought about doing like cloth sanitary pads and um thought, yeah actually that's a really good idea so then I ended up getting a focus group together of mums who helped me design them as well, really, and get them going. So, yeah, it's always just... And then it was just like, right, well, what else do mums use that's disposable that that I can I can make the whole package? So you've yeah. got, like, makeup pads and wipes and um, breast pads that you can all just wash and, and use again. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. And so when you started, did it did it grow quite quickly or did it was it quite steady at first because now it's yeah, it was big quite, yeah it was quite steady really it was it was it was tiny the market yeah. was tiny really like no one was like what yeah what? <laughs> you never saw them at any baby groups when I was going to baby groups so just I, didn't, I mean with my first I didn't even know they existed yeah you know, I just you just didn't even know and then and then it's just been like a slow slow burner really and then in lockdown it just went absolutely nuts yeah like nuts <laughs> yeah <laughs> it became, conven- became convenient then but in lockdown they were convenient because people didn't want to go to the shops so and mm-hmm. they wanted to wash yeah they didn't want to, and the nappies there was a bit of a shortage of them yeah everyone was hoarding them <laughs> Um, so yeah, in lockdown it just went nuts. It's tapered off a little bit now. It's yeah. more manageable. It was just, it was just, it was so hard. I bet. I mean, because I remember, yeah. So we, because we use cloth and. I only had one actually when we first went into lockdown, but she was still in her nappies. And I remember like going into the shops and there were like no nappies around. And I had like one rogue pack in like of like disposable nappies that we just had. I don't know why we even still had them really. I just had them around. And um, I ended up giving them to someone on the street because she just couldn't get nappies. And I was like, (laughs) well, I've got some like in a cupboard that we don't use if you want them. And she was so thankful for it. And I was like, it's just nappies. (laughs) But I felt really good that I'd been, yeah, using cloth. And, And again, with that, people were asking me lots of questions about it it really did get a lot bigger because people knew that I used them people were like asking me for like advice and stuff on how to use them and like where to get them and stuff like that because yeah what people thought was inconvenient actually did yeah become a lot more convenient because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had more time didn't you yeah rushing from there to there so what people a lot of people think it takes a lot of time well they, they had all of that time yeah. to, to, to wash nappies because I think, yeah, and I guess that's the next thing that I wanted to talk about, really, sort of like the, the common misconceptions around using sort of the nappies and the reusable products. And I think that is one of the big ones, isn't it? People just think, I don't have time. I hear it all the time from even my clients. They go, oh, I'm really interested. Can we talk about it? But I don't think I'll have time to use them. Like, I hear I know, it all the time. I, <laughs> I think I think if, if you're talking to um, a pregnant mum who doesn't know how much washing you're going to do, yeah. you just don't know, do you? No. No, I, I mean, it's like a line, isn't it? Like before you have a baby and after. Yeah. And until you cross that line, you've got no idea, do you? No idea. Do you? I think no I idea. used to do washing maybe like once every two weeks, like when I was a student. Yes. And then after that, maybe I got a bit better when I started working. And then I had my kids and I was like, oh my God. Oh, no, like no, every day, like, at least once a day. Yeah, it's just <laughs> never off your washing machine. So it's like, you're not going to stop washing anyway. You just throw an extra couple of washes in. You won't really notice. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I think one of the biggest things that people ask about is the poo. You know, yeah, it's like, oh, where, yeah. Do you, where does the poo go? And it's like, well, it goes down the drain where it's meant to go. Yeah. It's not meant to go into the into the bin and then into landfill or incineration. It's not yeah. meant to go there. It's good. And it's like, I always think, you know, like when babies do have the poo now, it's not the back poos. They... 
dirty, all the clothing, all the bedding, everything. And that just goes in the wash. Yeah, you don't chuck that in the bin, do you? You don't grow (laughs) sheets or baby grows away, do you? So it's like it's just the same. Yeah. It's just the same, you know, but actually reason that stop getting the poon hammies, don't they? A hundred percent. It's so much better. I like, yeah, we rarely had ones that went like up the back and stuff like that because it's so contained. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and then and so the I same with it's... um with sorry the same with I was gonna say the same with cloth wipes as well. I feel like when you do use um disposable wipes, you need to use about ten to clean up yeah. your baby. But if you use a cloth wipe, you generally just use one, occasionally two, very occasionally you use two. Yeah, <laughs> and I can't imagine the amount of money. I don't actually know the figures on that amount of money and wipes you must get through for yeah. a, a baby because you just. You just start. You're not always. You always need a wipe, don't you? Always. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, like I mean, so I've still got one in nappies. And Juniper's almost two, but Isabel, my eldest, she's like four and a half, and I still need to take wipes out when I take go out with her because she's so messy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a thirteen-year-old who's still so yeah. messy. <laughs> still using the cloth wipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's one of them. And then again, like you say, it's time. You know, it's people have not got enough time, but I'm like. I'm a bit of a, um, I've got a passion for kind of helping people like live simpler. So I think yeah. if you've not got enough time to wash nappies, then you need to slow down, you know, because yeah. you're rushing from pillar to post to do what? You yeah. know, I think, you know, convenient nappies and everything else that's made to dispose is to make us go faster. Yeah. And, and the reason we want to go for we've not it's like the industrial revolution isn't it sorry yeah. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent but it's like work 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 these products throw them away because it'll help you work faster and I'm a bit like well no you, that's not the way that we, we're designed to be we've never we've never changed in terms of evolution so we can't go any faster you know we, we're not robots so it's like sometimes I think that that whole convenience thing, it's just a con to get yeah. us to work faster so other people can earn money off our backs, you know, it's like, no, just, I think choosing to reuse is like a form of gentle activism, really, because if you if you think, no, I'm going to slow down, I've got time to wash my nappies, I've got time to wash my reusable cup or my reusable pads or, I think it's just that gentle gateway into a slower life, and not slower so you you know literally but yeah. so you've got more time to do the things that you want to do not just rushing around yeah for, the, for, for work or for whatever Oh, no, I absolutely love that. Yeah, I'd never really thought about it that way, but I'm very much about, like, slow living and trying to create, like, pockets of time everywhere. And my partner always jokes and says that I'm really lazy, not in, like, a malicious way, like, he laughs about it. But he's like, you're the most, like, sort of relaxed and lazy person that I know. But I'm like, I'm not. I just, I don't feel like I want to be productive all the time. And actually, and I know that that stemmed from becoming a mother because before that I was very driven with sort of everything. But actually... I think that a lot of that ties into, this is kind of just connected the dots, using the nappies and things like that and just realising that actually taking the time to do this feels really nice and it feels relaxing when you can say, I don't need to sit and reply to all these emails tonight. I'm going to sit and I'm going to wash the nappies and I'm going to fold them up and I'm going to sit with my daughter and we're going to chat while we do it and just relax and then we can be productive later on or we can set it into a pocket of time where that's productivity, but then that's it. And the rest of the time is, I don't need to run around for anybody else. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love that. I got goosebumps when you say that, because it's just so true, though. It's like so many of our mums in our community talk about the the pleasure of washing and stuffing nappies and how it gives them me time and space to just, just you know, think, not think about everything else that needs to be. It's just kind of it's mindfulness in a way. It's yeah. Like, you know, the hidden benefits of, of reusables are endless, really. But one of those, I mean, we had one mum said how it really helped with the postnatal depression because it gave her the routine, yeah. you know, the, the routine of choosing nappies, washing them and, and, and putting them out on the line. And it made her feel really good that she was doing something good for that day. And yeah. It's all of those kind of things. And it, they're just not, they're not just nappies. No. I think there's, there's a whole, there's a whole community behind them and there's a whole heap of the gateway to another life. Yeah. Really, I think, you know, like what you've just said, it's, you can just, you start to choose and to reuse and then it's like, oh, okay, and yeah. then it leads to another thing. We had one mum who was say she started only with one pack of wipes and she was like, I'm really daunted and I'm just going to buy the wipes. And then she bought a nappy and then she bought a bag 
and and then it was and then she became one of the biggest advocates I've ever known <laughs> for them. You know, so, you know, doing anything she could, and it's like you. I've got a different life now. I, I don't think of things in the same way. I, 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 you know, I think of things like you say in pockets of time. It's just lovely. It is. It definitely does work out like that. Because I mean, I started using them because. Um, I I just I used to really like wrestling when I was younger and then this like I still followed like this couple who was from wrestling and they posted that they were going to use them and I was like I've never considered this but I've always been kind of like a bit of an eco-activist anyway and like the kind of similar to you like my mum was quite similar and we were brought up to not be wasteful and stuff and I was like oh why have I never connected these dots so I looked into it and then yeah as soon as I like started picking them up I just I feel like like you said that they're they're joyful you feel yeah. good because you're doing you're taking the time you feel good because they're, they're joyful to look at like you said with the patterns as yeah. well I feel like when you're putting them on like a cloth bum just looks so cute okay. <laughs> and they just you just feel good about it and I feel and then you feel like you're doing something good for the environment and it just it is it becomes like a whole thing and you do and you do meet people through it like when I was at mum groups and stuff even then there was occasionally there'd be one other mum that was using them but sometimes none but they always start questions like I feel like sometimes as well you've got to justify why your kid has such a big bum and like they've not got a full nappy it's just a cloth nappy (laughs) and sometimes that leads and then people get really interested and you make connections through that and it is just it, it is there's it's such a supportive and like sort of kind and feel good community from them from something yeah from a nappy like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't believe it can you it's like it's not just a nappy I kind of hark on about that all the time yeah. you know there's a whole there's a whole life beyond that <laughs> That nappy. And I think when you talk about the prints, I think one of the cutest things is when they become toddlers and they choose their own nappy yeah. and they have their own favourite. And I think that's just it must and I always think um it must feel so much nicer for them. Yeah. You know, it, they can't tell you, can they, at the time? No. But imagine like they're so soft and lovely compared to like, you know, paper. Like, yeah, plasticky. It must feel yeah, yeah it must feel it, I'd love them to be able to say, oh, I think I've got one. Yeah, <laughs> just relax into it. <laughs> yeah. If they keep still for an happy change, that is, they don't. Yeah, that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah, it's a bit of a hassle at the minute changing a nappy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it does. It definitely it is. It's more. It's like you say. It's more than a nappy, a hundred percent. And I think that, I think if you could get that through to people beforehand, more people would be up for trying it. But I think it is just so we are just so sort of institutionalized to think, yeah, it's going to take too long. I don't have the time. And I think also because a lot of the time the way we talk about motherhood is being really hard that people just think I don't want to add another plate. Everyone's constantly talking about motherhood is a juggle. Motherhood is really hard. You're not going to have any sleep. You're never going to be this tired in your life. And then so people are thinking, why would I add on another layer of stuff to that? Whereas if we actually started talking about the joyful side of it and that the fact that, yeah, you're probably going to be tired, but, you know, it's for sort of a joyful reason. (laughs) then yeah, more yeah, people would be inclined to like try that, it. It's so so true, isn't it? It's just painted that picture of of, of hard work. Yeah. So then, obviously, nappies are then made hard work. It's like, it's not, they're not hard work, they're just a different work for yeah. me. And I love reusable products because once I've got it, it's gone out of the, you know, the hamster wheel in your brain yeah. where you're just spinning all the plates. And it's like, right, that's one thing I never, ever have to think about again. I don't have to think about nappies. I don't have to buy wipes I don't have to buy sanitary wear you know and uh, among everything else I mean especially wet bags as well like yeah wet bags are just like the most amazing thing oh we use wet bags so, for everything I take them for the swimming baths with me like I take them with I we put food in them when we get to picnic yeah. like we use them for everything now we've got like mums who've got like 30 yeah got, like, they, they use them for absolutely everything so I just think one and it's just like like one less thing off the to-do list is yeah. a good thing for me. You know, it's like, because it, there's always, it's Chadmin, as my uh, friend calls it, child admin. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, it absolutely is. It's Chadmin. <laughs> That's, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's never ending, isn't it? And I think, you know, it, anything that can be taken off that list with something that you reuse is always a bonus for me. Yeah, 100%, because that is something that you're going to be using for years. So if you don't constantly have to think, like, I don't know, I don't know how, like, a pack of nappy maybe lasts a week or two weeks, like, every week or two weeks, right, we're getting to the end, we need to get more, we need to get more. You never have to think about that. All you've got to think about is the washing, which you're thinking about, like you said, anyway. <laughs> yeah, which is in the, it's in the routine, isn't yeah. it? It's like, it's the same. And you don't have to go to your bin as much. And yeah. 
all of that kind of thing. So it's it's a different way. You've got to learn them. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's not a straight swap, but you've got to learn them to make sure that the fit's right and everything like that. But it's not you don't need a PhD in no. to be able to use them. No, definitely. It's definitely not as hard. Because, I mean, I felt like when I, like I say, I just saw someone online saying they were going to use them and I looked into them and I felt a little bit overwhelmed at first because I was like, right, there's all different types. How do you work it out? And then I was like, I'm just going to try one type and see what that's like. And we just got them. And I was like, this is, it. they go on the same as a regular nappy. Like, it's not rocket science. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, you say you have to learn the fit and stuff, but if you've never put on a nappy before, you have to do that with a disposable as well. So... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly true. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that that is just... if Yeah, if we could reframe it, that would make them more appealing if people would just be like... Actually, yeah, it's, it's a time to be... To slow down and it's it's something off your mental load. I think they're the yeah. main sort of main misconceptions. Actually, people think that they're a lot more hassle, and people, yeah, people say about the poo and think that that's going to be really disgusting and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> but it's another. It's again. It's like that line before before you have a baby, you don't realise how much you're going to talk about poo, do you? No. You've got no clue. Like, and then when you've had a baby, you become obsessed with it, don't you? It's like, yeah. what's in that nappy? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it tells you how your baby's health is, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, so, so you. I remember like one time. My son hadn't, hadn't pooed for like, I had constipation. He had pooed for days. And then um, I was really worried about him. And then he pooed. And I, I rang him at work. Because <laughs> <laughs> you become, like, obsessed with poo, don't you? Yeah. Like, maybe not obsessed, but you, you really... You don't realise that it just becomes part of your life. So, really, dealing with poo, it's just... A, day-to-day yeah parent, isn't it, really? absolutely like you've got to deal with it whatever sort of nappy you're using so yeah. <laughs> you can't get away until recently it. um pampers on the outside of the packet said that you're supposed to put the poo down below you oh really they said that you, yeah they've removed oh. that now only quite recently but that was always on the side of the packet that you, sh- you shouldn't put the poo in the bin yeah so, i mean know, it makes should... sense doesn't it like when you yeah. think about it why are we sending tons and tons of baby poo to landfill when it yeah, it's meant to go down the toilet. <laughs> I know, I know. When I, I, I was talking to someone who went to Senegal and she was saying it's such a beautiful beach, but it was littered with disposable nappies. Oh, no. So, you know, they, they, they do end up in the sea, yeah. you know, and, and all of that toxic waste that's going in the sea, it's just not good. Oh, it's, yeah, it's horrible to think about, isn't it? And it's not, yeah. like, not to shame people. I know some people... Oh God! Necessarily no. don't have no. a choice in what nappies they use, but I think yeah, if, I think if more people just understood more about them, then a hundred percent more people would be inclined to use them. And I do think I think we kind of said at the beginning that once you tried them, you do get hooked. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm all for it's not all or nothing. Yeah, you know? I'm not like anti disposables or anything like that. No. There's no guilt or shame in using them. It's it's just letting people know that there is another option with a lovely that brings joy and yeah. you know it's not it's not a case of either or we always say you only need one even if you just yeah. use one I think it stops seven hundred from going to waste yeah you if know. you use one so, a day like your babies yeah. are in nappies for a long time <laughs> yeah so it's yeah I completely agree it's just it's not nothing about there's so many. It's so polarising the society we live in now and it's like either or this, you know, this or that, this or that. And I'm like, I like to sit in that grey area, yeah. you know, of, of understanding. And it's like, no, that you know, today it might be that I can't be bothered to wash nothing, so I'm just going to use disposables. Yeah. And that's OK, you know. Yeah. And it, it, it's just allowing, allowing people to know that there is a different option out there. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I had a client recently, um, and she was starting using them, but she was just saying that she was like, at the minute, I can't. I'm not taking them out with me. I'm just taking um, disposables out. And her reasoning was just, she was like, they just don't fit in my nappy bag, and I like my nappy bag. So at the minute, I'm taking disposables, and I was like, that is more than fair, fair enough. enough. <laughs> that is more than fair enough. They do take up more room. If your nappy bag isn't big enough for all the stuff because you have to take so much stuff out with you, then just using them at home is more than good enough it's more yeah. than helpful <laughs> I think that's what we need to get to with parenting and motherhood especially it's just being good enough I think yeah. we beat ourselves up about trying to do everything right and good enough is just enough for our baby they don't know perfect do they they know <laughs> it's just good enough and if you your nappy bag fits your nappies then don't go out and buy a new nappy bag that's yeah the object doesn't it really? yeah you're then creating more waste because you've got a nappy yeah. bag at home that's unused <laughs> 
But again, so that kind of leads me on to, well, we've, we've been talking about it in and out of the whole conversation, but some of the benefits, I think obviously it's kind of the one that everyone knows, but the main benefit is the benefit to the environment. That is the the water wastage that's used from like disposable nappies and the landfill and things like that is such a benefit. Um, I don't know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you sort of know any of the numbers and stuff off the top of your head for how much sort of better they are for the environment? Um, well, there's actually, um, the government and DEFRA are actually doing a life cycle analysis at the moment ah. on the differences between them. So we've all kind of, including the disposable industry, we've all kind of submitted our information. So hopefully soon we'll actually have that evidence of, you know, exactly what goes in the disposable. Yeah. Uh, but it's huge amounts of water yeah. used to make reusables. And I remember seeing like a, you know, like an Instagram thing, about just about products in general, how much energy is used, water, resources from that take for the planet just for it to be used once and then put back in the planet, yeah. which essentially is landfill, isn't it? So I know eight million nappies get thrown away every day in the UK. That's just mind-boggling, that isn't it? Eight million every know, day. <laughs> like I think it's like three billion over the space of a oh. year. Which, just, you can't. I can't even like think about that because I I'll. It may. I get like eco anxiety about it. And well, I'm I think like, oh. I did something. Um, I think it's the size of the Empire State Building. That's the pile. That's how tall the pile would be of what the UK throws oh, at the end the size of the Empire State Building. Which that is, is just, like, where is it going? Like, we don't have enough space for it, do we? I well, I think a lot of it gets incinerated now, but that's uh, energy intensive, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just using, you know, the Earth's resources to make something that can be used once. That's the problem, I think. Yeah. You know, and then when, when there are things that stop that, that you can reuse, because not only use on one baby, I mean, we've had nappies that have been used on four or five children, you know. Yeah. So, and then you think about the money that that must save. And I think if you go to like absolute the the cheapest disposable on the market, I think you can save seven hundred pound over the over the time that your baby's in nappies. Yeah. On one child. So then if you think about multiple children, you've got to keep buying how, them. How much that will save? Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot. It's mad, isn't it? And then, and yeah, and I mean, as well, a lot of people buy them secondhand as well, because I think that's another misconception yeah. is that, oh, they're so expensive. But even if you are buying them new, you're still saving money over the long run. But you don't even have to buy them new. They, they don't just expire no. after one child. Like, no. you can use them. And then you can sell them at the end of, well, if you're not having any more children, then you can sell them and recoup some of the money back and know that they're going on to, to someone else. So, yeah, they're, they're amazing like that, really. Yeah, because we we had we had a mixture. We had new and we had um, like pre loved ones as well. And you can barely tell the difference because they just they they're so well made and they sort of keep their and they keep their value, like you said as well. We were, we were buying second hand, but like it wasn't too much cheaper. <laughs> but because, <laughs> yeah. because they're such good quality and everyone and because people want them and they're amazing and they do they just last and last and last and last. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite magic, amazing, really. really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think I think that's definitely a benefit. Is that yeah, obviously they're better for the environment, but they're definitely they're definitely better for your money. And and I think sometimes yeah, it is that initial outlay of money that people can't necessarily afford. But then people are not necessarily aware of the fact that we have cloth libraries, and you can always hire them from cloth nappy libraries and different brands and different websites and things like that that you can always hire them and try them out. And then when you do see the value of them, and then you've used them for a while, then maybe you can find a way maybe you get vouchers from somebody or you get them as presents we, we some we got them actually for um when juniper was born people were saying what do you want as presents and then we were just saying well, just get us a few more cloth nappies because you don't really oh, need well, anything okay. but actually we could probably do with some extra nappies because there was a tiny bit of crossover where they would both be in them so we got some as like baby shower gifts for that oh wow well, that's so. such a good idea yeah. yeah we have quite a lot of that send uh, set, give them out to gifts yeah you know, once once i think it helps with the people get so sad when people when the baby's potty train and yeah nappies. so they end up <laughs> becoming enablers and they yeah like the friends <laughs> just <laughs> passing them on still be, yeah so they can still be in the clock nappy world i think oh no yeah definitely and i think and that is i think that's kind of the same with um 
with the other reusables as well, like reusable wipes, reusable breast pads. Like I always see people selling those on. And actually, I think I got some of our breast pads secondhand as well because I use the Baba and Boo ones, but I got them from, um, I never know how you say it, Babby Pear. Is that how you oh, say yeah. it? Because <laughs> we get like everything from that website. <laughs> I'm basically going to enable for Baba and Boo and Babby Pear at this point. <laughs> but I got some from there and then um, I saw someone in the Babby Pear Facebook group selling some more and I was like, oh, I could do with some more. So I even got those second hand. And at yeah. first I was like, is this a bit gross? And then I was like, well, you just wash them. Like there's nothing left on yeah. them. <laughs> no, I'm totally. I always think with washing. Like the NHS, uh, you just wash things at 60 and that's that's mm. good enough for the NHS, then it's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> It's absolutely fine. I know it's just a bit of milk at the end of the day. Like exactly, it's gonna come yeah. out in the wash, isn't it? It's not. So yeah. we use those second hand and pass those on. And then I don't even know what I've done with mine. I can't remember if I sold them or if I give them to somebody. But they've gone to another home now. <laughs> so they they've gone. And then we've got our wipes that we've had forever, and we'll probably sell those on afterwards as well. And they just they just keep going, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they, they just you just pass them down. It's like. I had, uh, I was brought up on hand-me-downs. I yeah. came from a big family of cousins. Yeah. And, you know, that hand-me-down culture. I loved it. You know, I just, I get a big bag of clothes every month. Or yeah. It's like, <laughs> yes. You know, it's just the same as that, isn't it? It's like nothing wrong with them, whole, that hand-me-down thing. It's how it should be. Yeah, it's 100%. How it it's how it should be. I think that's like, that's one of the big shifts that seems to be happening now I think people do seem to be becoming more aware because obviously like the climate crisis and things like that that actually sort of shopping second hand for stuff is not something that you need to do out of just because you can't afford it basically it's something that actually we should all be doing because it's better for the environment and a lot of the time you can get if someone's selling something on it's probably quite well made because it's lasted long enough for them to yeah. be able to sell it on so you're getting quality things you are saving yourself some money and you are sort of saving the planet so I think yeah. we are sort of getting to that point it seems like it anyway I sometimes wonder if I'm in an echo chamber of because all my friends are doing it and the people that mean. I know and I'm like is this actually happening or am I just does it look like it I know I know what you mean I try and spend some time outside of my echo chamber it's really hard isn't yeah it? and then end up just in one because you just think everyone must use because that's what we do when they yeah. look outside. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> you look outside your echo chamber. Yeah. But yeah, I think, and then just the other like sort of misconception that I think people have is we kind of touched on it, but people thinking that they're difficult to use. So I was just going to ask sort of what your experience is of sort of how to learn. What do you think is the best way to learn how to use them? Well, we have a nappy trail and we always say we use one. Yeah. Don't, you know, you don't overwhelm. We get lots of people who buy a kit and are ready to go all in. But it's just, I think with us, we we give a helping hand with, yeah. with every kind of nappy sold. We'll say, if you need any help, and, you know, you, you've got, like, your videos and, you, and your manuals and things. But I do think you find a lot of people who use reusables have come to you because they know someone who's used them, and I think that's yeah. the... They've got someone there to show them, or and I think that's the nicest the nicest way you've always kind of you're led in by a friend or someone even someone that you've met online maybe yeah. someone like yourself you know like yeah. you might have shown up or, and it's just I mean if you search cloth nappies how to fit a cloth nappy something like 13 million hits yeah. on, on Google or something <laughs> like that so there's just a wealth of information out there but I think I think for us we're massive on keeping it simple because there's that much information out there it can come be really overwhelming like we always say, look, you don't need a certificate or yeah. anything to be able to wash them, to be able to fit them. They're really easy if you know if you just follow these few little guidelines. And if you don't, then we're here to help. Type thing, you know. It's yeah. It's, it's like anything, really. You know, and any kind of product that is a little bit. It's not even nearly technical, but you know, it's got a few poppers on it. You might need to know how to use it. You just need an instruction manual and someone there to to guide you if you can't follow it which yeah. is essentially what we do yeah yeah like you said it's the same with everything isn't it? and and they are yeah at the end of the day they are just snappies <laughs> like yeah. it is no it's not rocket science they are easy and I think that's the same with washing I think a lot of people get bogged down in how to wash them and I think sometimes that can be confusing because when you do google it there's a few conflicting sort of pieces of advice on it and people will be like right well I want to use these but I have no idea if I'm getting them clean enough um but again, like you say, if, if 
if like you guys you offer that advice out or if you do know somebody then you can be like well what works for you I think that is a lot of the time the easiest way to work out what to do yeah you find your own way with it but we always just give really simple advice you know you use whatever washing powder you use at home they don't need special powder you know you just they just fit in with you not the other way around and I think that's what people think it's a huge lifestyle change using them and really they should just be like choosing a bib really that's how easy they should it shouldn't have this big stigma attached like ooh Big, the big and scary it's just the same as using the bib but you just sh- shove it in the wash yeah you, know, you don't throw bibs away do you when they no. sick on and you don't worry about like how they've been washed yeah you know you just shove it in the wash with your normal clothes and it's just the same for nappies yeah it's, I think that's really just, good that's really good advice because yeah we, we was the same because when when we started using them I was like I know that some brands sell like all the different sort of powders and things like that and we were like what on earth do we buy for this and then i read somewhere i can't even remember where i read i think it was just in a facebook group but someone was like literally just use the wash powder that you have at home like you don't have yeah. to it's no more complicated than that like just pre-wash them and then put them on a wash a hot wash with some powder and i was like oh okay and it always yeah. worked <laughs> always yeah, works that's it. <laughs> well, you see some things now about them needing let me get questions what spin speed do i need to put them on <laughs> I don't even know how to change that on my washing machine. No, me neither. <laughs> like, just whatever you normally have, you yeah. know. They're not, I think people love them so much that they become precious to them, and I totally yeah. get that. But they're so hard wearing, you know, yeah. they're to collect poo and be washed and used and however many times over and over and over again. You, you, yeah. can't, you can't hurt them by... Uh, choosing a different spin speed or whatever no and yeah like you say i get it and uh, yeah i think for some people they're kind of yeah they're really precious to them and they're also like we said they're a bit of a lifeline to them as well so i think they do sort of get into that thing where they start creating these sort of mad sort of ritual i mean sometimes you read people's wash cycles and i'm like i don't like i i live slowly but i don't have time for that like (laughs) <laughs> like it doesn't have to be complicated. Much better things to be thinking yeah. About. <laughs> but yeah, I just think yeah, if we it just if people knew how simple they were, it would people would be more inclined to try them because it really is as simple as you buy some nappies, you put them on the popper that fits you like the size that fits your child, and then you put them in the wash, and then that that is literally especially when you have ones that are like either all in one or one way you just stuff them because i think yeah sometimes people see the old-fashioned style ones and think there's about 10 different parts and how to put them together whereas actually most modern ones and especially your guys ones are not they're not complicated at all it is a nappy it is literally a nappy yeah <laughs> it's there to, it replicates a disposable really yeah. you know <laughs> you pop it instead of putting the tabs over or whatever yeah, yeah it's like i think that's where the confusion lies isn't it it's like an, a, we find a lot of resistance mums tell us it comes from their mums or their uh, mother-in-laws or you know who maybe have had to wash yeah them back then um you know like they think it's all terriers and scrubbing them and boiling them yeah. and it's just not like that anymore yeah i remember actually i did get that from people in my family like we was like right we're gonna use cloth and i was like why would you do that why on earth would you do that it's so time consuming and i was like they're not they're not like that anymore nana it's not like what you went through <laughs> <laughs> yeah I hear that as well yeah I always hear that from people I completely forgot about that because everyone's used to them now and, every, and then the funny thing is that when I did start using them everyone in my family was like wow these are amazing and everyone always said, like comments on how cute they are and how easy they are as well because when I, I remember when I was using them and then if like my dad was maybe watching like Isabel for a couple of hours or something I'd give him the nappies and at first he was like well, what do I do with it and I was like just put it on like a nappy and then like after like the second time he came around he was like oh I love these they're so nice they're so easy I think it is literally as simple as that, isn't it? As simple as you let someone try it and they're like, oh, I don't know why I complicated this. (laughs) Yeah, it's one of those things that you... you, We're very, really, really good as human beings in overcomplicating things, aren't we? Like, going simple is actually the hardest thing. Yeah. It's like, actually, they're just nappies. Yeah. They're more than nappies, but when when it comes to just... Yeah. It is, yeah. It's a nappy at the end of the day. Yeah. Maybe some of us are just a bit over enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is just a nappy. No, it's definitely not. It definitely is that community and that support branch and that, and yeah, like you say, like that mindfulness of just taking that time and that connection. And also just knowing that you're putting something so nice on your child. Just, it just, yeah. it just, it feels nice. It is, it's a whole thing. It's not just a nappy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> right, I will leave it there because we've covered a lot of stuff and we've been talking for a long time. But is there anything else you wanted to add before I let you chat about where to find you and stuff? Or uh, mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. I think we've covered most things. Yeah, I feel like we've basically just, yeah, talked about how joyful they are for like nearly yeah, an hour. Yeah, <laughs> but that's good. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we've convinced some people to give them a try. Um, yeah, so absolutely. do you want to tell us where we can find out more about Baba and Boo and uh, your offerings and stuff? Yeah, so we you can find us at www.babaandboo.com. We offer um, nappy trails where you can, you, it's risk-free a nappy trail. You just get one to try and see how it goes. And we're there to help you. We offer everything from that up to starter kits with everything that you need to get going. And we're really big on helping and really helping you get going. So it's not just like you'll buy from us and then it's like, see you later, thanks very much. We're there, always there being help, asking, are you okay, are you getting on okay? So we're really kind of quite big on, on that and helping you keep it simple and offering advice. So, yeah, and then we're, we're over on Instagram and um, all, your gen, all your usual yeah. social media channels, trying to keep up with them all. Yeah. <laughs> So oh, many I now. TikTok, I've not mastered that one yet. <laughs> oh, it's oh, I've just I've just started trying to use TikTok and I do not understand it. I'm like I'm too old for this. I don't get it. <laughs> I know. It's just like oh gosh. So yeah, I keep thinking I need. I get emails from all the time. Do you want to get on TikTok? I can help you get on. And I'm like oh, one day. It's on the to-do list one day. Yeah, I mean, it'd be good for your um, for Baba and Boo because that I've got onto it and there's a really big community of people who are using reusable nappies and into, like, sort of gentle parenting, attachment parenting. There's a lot of chat about that. So it probably is a good thing to do at some point, but I do understand that it is. Well, I feel like I've only just got to grips with Instagram <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> another one! Oh, no, and well, Instagram changes all the time. Yeah. You've got to use to it and then it's like, no, we're not doing that anymore. Now you need to do this. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like... <laughs> But yeah, eventually TikTok. But for now, yeah, uh, Instagram and Facebook mainly, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So that concludes our chat about reusable postpartum products. I hope you loved it and that maybe it even inspired you to look into using cloth nappies yourself. If you still think that they're not for you, then maybe just start somewhere smaller. Like we said in the chat, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Maybe you use disposable nappies, but you try out reusable breast pads because just like with cloth pads, like I said in the intro, reusable breast pads are so much comfier because they're not made of like scrunchy plasticky paper. If you'd like to know more about Baba and Boo, then all of their links will be in the show notes below. So do go and check those out. I'll link their website, their social media and the pages that they have on hiring and advice too. If you have any more questions, then come hang out on Instagram where I'm at the Dungaree Doula and Eve is at Baba and Boo and let us know if you enjoyed the episode. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please do stick around, like, follow and subscribe and remember to leave a little review if you don't mind because it's so very helpful for my little pod. Speak soon. Bye.